Hey my glam girls, welcome back to my channel. It's Chelsea where we talk about all things glam and all things girly. I'm a beauty enthusiast and consultant who loves to talk about everything dealing with beauty and makeup and today we have two new products to talk about. One, the Huda Beauty Empowered Palette and then two, Sonia G's new Fusion Eye Brush Set. So, Let's get into all of those details, but before we get into those details, thank you so much for deciding to spend some time with me today. I truly do appreciate it, and let's get right into this video. Okay, I lost my voice last week. I have no clue how and why I was not sick, but if I do sound a little raspy, I am channeling my Phoebe raspy voice, sexy voice. But if you do hear my voice cracking, I'm clearing my throat and all of that, my voice is coming back, so bear with me. Okay, now to what you're here for. So, Huda Beauty came out with her new Empowered eyeshadow palette. This does retail for $67 and it is available now. This is what the inside of the palette looks like and it is quite beautiful. I love this um, outer packaging. So, I'm sure it's plastic, feels like a very like nice durable plastic, very nice size functional mirror that we get here. But this color story, I am here for. It is definitely not if I could say your traditional color story in terms of like a traditional neutral, a traditional warm or cool tone type of palette. I really like this color story and the way that these shadows are laid out. So in this palette, she says that we get 18 golds, coppers and neutrals and matte metallic shimmer and gel liner hybrid textures. This is your ultimate everyday palette. It's great for subtle to stand out looks. It contains two ultra pigmented hybrid eyeshadow gel creams. And then it has two mesmerizing shimmer metallics, two innovative wet metallics, and then two soft shine metallic pearl shadows, and then nine pigmented velvety soft matte. She says the term empowered encourages having the knowledge, confidence, means, or ability to do things or make decisions for oneself. And I really do love that. So let's get into the two eye looks that I created. This eye look that I'm actually wearing, I didn't film it, sorry, I was kind of rushing for work, but I will tell you the shadows that I used to create this eye look. But getting into the two that I did film, now you guys know, if you don't know, I tend to forget the order of how I do my eyeshadows. I'm gonna try to remember, but if I forget, look at the tutorial, you'll eventually see all the shades in terms of the ones that I use for the eye look. So let's start off with this shade called Rebel. I believe this was the first shade that I started with in the tutorial. Rebel is described as a burnt nude velvety matte. This shade is very nice and pigmented and I will say that all of the matte shades in this palette are nice and pigmented, meaning that I was able to take the Sonia G blender brush. So this is one of the new fusion eye brushes. I love this domed rounded tip and I was literally able to take that shade Rebel and just tap it and blend it all at once, which I really do love that. I love and I'm learning to love the tapping and blending motion versus the traditional, you know, blend and swipe type of motion. This brush allowed me to pick up a lot of the shadow but not too much and I was able to tap and blend it effortlessly. Then I believe I went in with the shade called Purpose. Now, I will be honest and admit to you that I didn't realize this was supposed to be a gel liner type of shadow. I thought this was more like a cream shadow. So I just wanted to play with this palette before getting into the details of it, which might have been not so smart, but at the same time, you know, we're here to learn, right? So here is a swatch of the shade called Purpose. This is a gel liner formula, and it is described as being a black hybrid gel liner shadow. So based on what she said, you can use it as a shadow or you could use it as a gel liner, and that's the shade blended out a little bit more. So this shade, when I was just using it on the eyes before I realized it was a gel hybrid cream liner eyeshadow, um, I, I did think I was gonna get more pigmentation like right off the bat just based on how it looks in the pan and also knowing that Huda does a really good job of coming with very intense shadows. So I did, I was kind of like, okay, this is definitely more of a buildable formula. Now understanding that it is also a purpose to be a liner, I would still say that I wish there was more pigmentation kind of right off the back, but I do like that you can build the intensity and you can blend it out. So if you feel like you go in with too much, you can blend it out quite nicely and shear it out. Um, and you can also build it up to be a little more intense. So with the eye look that I was creating, 
as you saw within the demonstration, it definitely sheared out probably faster than I wanted it to, I'll be honest. Um, and so that's why after that, I went in with the shade called Confident, I believe. So Confident is described as a brown velvety matte. And I will say that this shade looks more like almost plum light to me, like a brown plum. So this is the shade blend out a little bit more. So I put that shade on top of the black gel, or gel liner hybrid shade just to make it a little bit more intense. And it, it got a little more intense, but I, I really wanted that outer area to be like, bam, in your face. I saw a tutorial that Natasha did with her palette and I wanted to kind of like reinvent that look just using this palette and kind of putting my own flair to it. And these two shades by themselves did not give me the intensity that I wanted. So I'll be honest with that. I do like how it all came together, but I wanted it to be a little more intense. Like I really wanted that black to be bold. So I, I do wish that this black shade would have been more bold. But at the same time, the formula is buildable. So that is good. After that, I really don't remember what I went in with. I think I went in with the shade called Courageous right here. And Courageous is described as a multi-chrome creamy metallic. And I love the shade Courageous. It's that beautiful pinky green gold shift that in all honesty, we've seen this shade quite a few this year. Um, and also in other palettes that came out before this year. So when I see this shade, I immediately think of Pat McGrath, Sextra Terrestrial from Mothership 8. Then I think of Danessa Myrick's Lightworks 4, the shade Trippy. Ooh. So I have that one right here, and you can kind of see the shift here. I think of Mel and Sydney Grace's palette. I forgot the name of the shadow, but there's a few palettes that have the same kind of like green, um, green, pink, gold type of shift, but it is really pretty, very soft, not chunky in its formulation for it to be a metallic shade, and it blended really nicely. So then I think I went in with the shade called Bold Moves because I wanted to bring a bit of dimension to that eye look. Bold Moves is a white gold and true gold metallic speckled type of shade. This shade is really, really pretty, definitely pigmented, and I didn't want this shadow to overshadow the shade Courageous, so I took my blender brush, I went in with one of the BK Beauty brushes, I can't remember the name of it, and just lightly tapped the brush into this shade and dusted it over the eye look just to bring a bit more dimension to it, and I really liked how that look. And I believe that I also put this shade in the inner corner of the eye and then also on the lower lash line. And I believe those are all the shades for that look. If I forgot a shade, you could just tell me in the comment section. <laughs> so then we go to the second eye look. And for that eye look, I believe I went in with more of these tones right here. So I believe I started with the shade called Power right here. Power is described as a beige velvety matte, and I feel like the shade has more of like a peachy hue to it. And this one blended really, really nicely into my eye. Definitely didn't really show up too much, but this was also a really great blender shade. So, you know, when blending the, like when adding other shades, if I needed to blend out the edges, this shade Power was good for that. Then I believe I went in with Best Self. Yes, I think I went in with Best Self. Best Self is described as a peachy, velvety matte. And I feel like these two shades right here, Best Self, Power and Best Self, they could have chosen one of these shades. And I am speaking from a person of color as a black woman. On my eye, you definitely see Best Self more, but this shade right here, uh, Power, doesn't really show against my complexion. But I do feel like even if you had a lighter complexion, you're not gonna see too much of a difference and these two shades blended out on the eye. So I think maybe they could have, you know, swapped out one of these shades for another shade, um, maybe a deeper matte shade, because outside of the shade Confident, and I'm kind of getting into my review part, so, oh well. <laughs> but outside of the shade Confident, we don't have a darker matte shade, and I think a darker matte shade would have been nice versus having the other deeper shades in this palette be like that gel cream liner formula. Um, then I believe I went in with a shade called Get It. Get It is described as a soft orange suede matte. 
and I do like this shade as well. But once again, these three shades right here, although it's a really pretty gradient, depending on your complexion, like against me, once they were blended on the eye, you really couldn't see a difference between all three. So although the shades are pretty, um, and I could see the flow of the color story, to me, in terms of use, I'm not really getting variation right here with those shades. Okay, so then I wanted to go in with a shade called Legacy. Legacy is described as a warm brown velvety matte, and the shade was really beautiful. Once again, like I said, these matte shades blend beautifully. Um, no issues, no skipping, no patchiness. I really enjoy this formula of matte. So I wanted to create a bit of a halo eye, so I took the shade Legacy, applied it in the inner corner of my eye and also on the outer corner of the eye, and then blended those shadows together. So for the, um, highlighted area i wanted to go in with the shade called do it do it is described as a copper metallic and this shade is really really pretty and so this is a really pretty shade for like maybe a one and done look like this will look really beautiful maybe throw one of these peachy shades in the crease and you've got like a very simple but really pretty easy eye look but i definitely wanted to add some dimension to that eye look because i felt like on its own it looked kind of like we're here but I, let's jazz it up so i went in with the shade called limitless limitless is described as a gold crushed flakes metallic and this shade is so so pretty it reminds me of danessa myrick's um what is it the shade called divinity right here except it has a bit more of a base to it. So we do still get kind of that metallic topper feel to the shadow, but this shade Limitless does have more of a base. So you could put it on the eye by itself and you'll get a little bit, it, and it has more of ability to stand on its own versus being like a true metallic like shimmer topper. Um, and I saw that and I liked it, but I wanted to take it up a bit of a notch. So then I took Charisma and for both Limitless and Charisma, I went in with the same technique of taking a more fluffy brush and then like lightly dusting it. Um, actually, no, I didn't take a fluffy brush. I took Sonya G's Builder Brush. So I haven't been talking about the brushes, sorry guys. I'll talk more about them after the palette. Um, so I went in with Sonya G's Builder Brush right here and then tapped the shadows on so that I could um, control how much I wanted to apply, but you know, also allow for the two shades to show up. And so Charisma had definitely has more of an impact of sheen and shine than um, Limitless does. I feel like Charisma is a definitely a little bit more opaque. And Charisma reminds me of Fenty Beauty's Trophy Wife. And the only reason why that came to mind is because that's actually what's on my list. I had the Fenty Beauty Trophy Wife highlighter that I just put on my lips and then I topped it with their um, Fenty Beauty Ice Gloss. So that's what's on my lips. But I just applied it and I was like, this reminds me of Trophy Wife. So let's do a little comparison while we're here. So here is Fenty Beauty's Trophy Wife and this is Huda Beauty's Charisma. So very similar in tone and also very similar in texture as well. On the lower lash line, I went in with the shade called Worthy and Worthy is the other gel cream liner hybrid formula. And she describes it as a deep brown hybrid gel liner shadow. So let's put Worthy right here. And I just took that and blended that across the lower lash line. I do like the intensity from this shadow, I really do. And then after Worthy, I took the shade called Keep Going right here and blended Worthy with Keep Going. Keep Going is described as a latte brown velvety matte. So I'll put Keep Going right here. And that blended out really nicely. Once again, can't say enough great things about the mattes in this palette. And for the inner corner, I think for the inner corner of my eye, I went back in with Charisma and Limitless, and I think that's what I put on the inner corner. I think that's what I did. If I didn't do that, forgive me. Oh, I forgot a shade. You already saw it. The shade called Visionary. I think I applied Visionary before Do It, I think. Or it might have been on the other eye. You already saw Visionary go on 
my eyes in the demo, but let me swatch it for you. So Visionary is a bold and brown marble type of shade. So let's put Visionary right here. I knew I was missing a shade. <laughs> So there's Visionary, very beautiful, has a nice satin formula. This shade, honestly, you could also use it like on the cheeks as a blush. If you have, I would say, if you have about a nice tan to deep complexion, this would be a really good blush shade on you or maybe even a highlighter shade, depending on the depth of your complexion and depending on the types of highlighters that you like. But very beautiful, smooth formulation and I really liked how it applied on the eyes. So I think those are all the shades that I use for those two eye looks. And then I'll quickly go over the shades that I use for this eye look because that gets us using all the shades in the palette. So for this eye look, I started off with the shade Manifested right here. This is described as a copper gloss hybrid metallic shade. So that is going to be the shade Manifested. So I applied this one all over my eyes as a base, didn't apply anything else. And this shade um, definitely feels like a cream. It feels more like a cream, if, if that makes sense. Um, and it's got a little bit of tack to it. So I blended that all over the eye. Then I went over the eye with, I went over the eye with Limitless cause I really like this shade in the palette. And then after Limitless, I took the shade called Bold Moose and I put it in the inner corner, like right here and right here and also on the inner corner of the lower lash line. So then for the lower lash line, I went back in with Worthy, the shade here, and then I used the shade Winner and also this shade right here, which is called Big Dreams. And that's what I used to smoke out the lower lash line. So I kind of mixed some cool tones and some warmer tones together, which I really like how it came out. So here's the shade Winner. And then here is the shade called Big Dreams. So hopefully you can see those two. And I mean, you know, I've said it a million times now, both of these shades blended out really, really nicely. Let me swatch Big Dreams a little bit better so you can see it a little bit better. So there's Big Dreams and then that's Winner right here. And then for the inner corner, I just took Bold Moose and used that for the inner corner. And that gets us using all of the shades in the palette. So I, like I said, I really, really do like this eyeshadow palette. I really think it's beautiful. And I like that this eyeshadow palette really, like I would agree that this could be your everyday eyeshadow palette because depending on what shade you use, you can get a very subtle look with this palette or you can definitely take it to a more bold, a more dramatic look. I, like I said, formulation is beautiful. Like there was not, one eyeshadow that I used that I was like, this formula is just trash, it's patchy, doesn't blend well. You've already heard my preferences. So for me, in all honesty, I am not gonna use these two shades as liner per se. I will definitely use them maybe to give me like a faux liner, but I think for me, I would use these more so as just cream bases for the eye look um, and like, I mentioned earlier, I just wish this had more pigmentation um, because I really was expecting it to be more intense. I do like the pigmentation of the shade Worthy. I think that one is beautiful. And then like I mentioned to you before, I just wish for my complexion and complexions that are deeper, more especially because we're not gonna see those variations of tones against our complexions. I wish we could have maybe switched out one or two of these shades for something a little bit, a bit more rich, a little bit more deep that could have complemented this color story, but that could have given us a little bit more variation in the matte shades. But all in all, I really do like this palette. I most definitely will be picking it up um, to create more looks because this, this color story definitely screams this time of year of fall. I feel winter's in here, but I also can see myself using this palette, even branching into this Bring because not all of the shades in this palette are like deep, dark, and vampy. So if you were interested in this palette and you feel like you could enjoy this color story and the shadows, I think you're not gonna be disappointed because I really, really do enjoy the, the shades in this palette and the tones in this palette and the formula. Now to quickly go over Sonia G's Fusion Eye Set. I was so excited when I saw this because I love her fusion 
brush set, her face brush set. It is beautiful. And if you're not new to my channel, you know that I love Sonia G. I'm so grateful that I received these from Sonia G and Beautylish. So thank you to both of them for thinking of me and sending them to me. But regardless, I would have bought these anyway. So I was very happy to receive them. But as soon as I saw the release, I was like, if I don't get sent these, I'm buying these. So this is the Fusion Eye Brush Set. It does retail for $145. You can get it from Beautylish and they are still available. So we get five brushes that can be used with cream and powder products, which I'm really excited about because I need my brushes to work with me. A lot of times I don't want to have to think about what brush I can use with what product. I want to reach for a brush and use it. So I am happy that we can use these with cream and powder products. So first getting into the detail brush. This is what the detail brush looks like. We've got a nice pointed tip and then the hairs kind of taper into this tip. It says that this is a targeted brush to apply cream or powder shadows along the outer V, the mobile lid, crease, brow bone, or lash line. So with creating all three of these eye looks, I definitely used this when I wanted to get detailed into the crease. Um, I also used this when I wanted to create my spotlight eye look because I was able to put this where I wanted to put it on the eye and blend it as well. So I do like that, although this is a detailing brush, it also can be used to blend the product. And sorry, my brushes are dirty. I haven't washed them yet from actually using them. Then we have the worker brush. Here is the worker brush, a really nice flat shader type of brush that does come to a nice domed shape here. And this is going to be a multi-purpose brush to pack, transition, blend, or smudge creams, concealers, or powder products. I do think this was the one brush that I didn't use today, um, but I would definitely use this to apply shadow onto the eye, or even if I wanted to get very detailed and applying shadow along the lower lash line or even concealer. We have the blender brush, which I showed you all before. I, nice, I like this nice rounded dome tip. And the blender brush is gonna be a round blending brush to use on the entire eye area or just blend along the crease. Here we have the builder brush, which is a more short, dense uh, flat shader brush. And the Builder is a versatile brush to apply or smudge creams or powders with control. So I did use this today to apply the metallic shades on the eye. I wanted to make sure I kept it in one area and I could control where I applied it. And I definitely felt I had control with this brush. And then lastly, we have the Jumbo Worker Brush. So this brush, when I saw it, I immediately thought this is gonna be great for concealer or this would be great to use on the face. And so this is going to be a multi-purpose brush small enough to apply cream, liquid, powder, or hybrid formulas around the eyes and large enough for blush application and sculpting. I didn't even think about it for blush or sculpting, but I could definitely see how you could use that for those purposes. I didn't get it on camera, but today when I applied my foundation, I definitely used this brush to apply it. So I tapped and pressed along the areas where I have some breakouts, where I want more coverage, and I was able to blend it out also across the face. So I can definitely see this being a multi-purpose type of brush. Sonia G makes some of the most affordable food aid. And if you have not tried our brushes, you must. I'm telling you, they are worth the investment. And I remember before I got into Food A, I was just like, is it really worth the money? Am I gonna see a difference in what my eyeshadow looks like, my complexion products? And I remember I asked Sean for one of Sonia G's um, brush sets for the eyes for Christmas. And I did my eyeshadow that day and I was like, oh, yep. It is definitely a game changer. So I think this is so great. These brushes can definitely be used for any eye look. And I think for almost the most part, you've got a full eye look worth of brushes here. So if you're interested in this brush set, I highly recommend it. I absolutely enjoyed using all of these brushes today. Like I said, the only one that I didn't use today was the worker brush, but I don't doubt I'm gonna love it. Um, just just because of the shape of it, I know it's going to be great. So, still available on Beautylish. Highly suggest you check them out. If you know anything about Sonia G's brushes, they do not always come back in stock quickly when they do go out of stock. So if you've been eyeing this, go ahead and pick it up. So, that's it, you guys. Let me know your thoughts down below on the brush set and also on Huda's eyeshadow palette. Did you get this? Are you interested in it? Are you gonna pick it up? What are your thoughts? Leave all of that down in the comment section below. 
And if you've made it to this point in the video and you have yet to subscribe to my channel, I would love for you to consider subscribing and joining the Glam Girl Squad. And guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope to see you in my very next video. Bye guys.